hey, these are exciting times. In May 6th, only nine or ten days off, we go to the Canadian Supreme Court in Ottawa to present our arguments about why marijuana should be legal. And it's really important because the government of Canada is proposing sometime in June, they say, that they're going to uh, be lowering the penalty for having under maybe now just 10 grams or 20 grams of marijuana. It was once a 30 gram threshold, now it's coming down. And our minister, uh, Martin Cochon, he said he's going to go to the U.S. and explain to them that it's going to be enforced very severely, blah, blah, blah. So already the message from the government is that this is going to be a very watered down, inconsequential bill. It's still moving in the right direction, but it's moving very little in the right direction. Well, we're going to the Supreme Court on May 6th to make, ask the court to make it so that Parliament can never criminalize smoking marijuana and hopefully as a consequence from that uh, growing marijuana and cultivating marijuana that possession should not be a criminal offense of this plant. And of course the judges have already asked back in December when it got adjourned, they asked the Crown, well if it's not going to be a penalty to possess it, how can we have such putative penalties for selling it or cultivating it? That simply doesn't make sense. So there'll be a lot of arguments and questions asked on the May 6th hearing at the Supreme Court. A verdict will come six to eight months later, probably January uh, of uh, February of next year, 2004. But this weekend, uh, uh, before uh, the Supreme Court hearing, and uh, I'm a bit excited about this, is the Tokers Bowl, the Drug War Vigil Film Festival in Vancouver. There's the uh, uh, North American Hydroponics Convention at the Pan Pacific on Saturday, March, uh, May 3rd. There is the big global marijuana march May 3rd at the Art Gallery, 2 p.m. Be there. Uh, we always have a great parade. We're going to march around the uh, British Columbia Supreme Court in the downtown area. Uh, I'll be giving a speech there and we'd like to see your participation. So anyone in British Columbia looking to join the Global Marijuana March on May 3rd, come to Vancouver. And there'll be lots of people, a lot of activists in on that weekend. Uh, and a special thing for people on POT TV right now um, is that all the really interesting entries to the Drug War Vigil Film Festival will be posted on POT TV during the time of the Tokers Bowl, uh, Global Marijuana March period, Drug War Film Vigil here downtown. So uh, you can watch all our entries from May 1st, Thursday, May 1st to Sunday, May 4th. All the entries that we have here at the Drug War Vigil Film Festival will be on POT TV. And we want you to watch them, we want you to enjoy them, and we want you to rate them, and we're going to factor your comments and opinions and gratings of these films in as to who we give our awards. We have $7,000 about in cash prizes going to people who made these films, somewhere between five dollars and $7,000 for the top five films. So your opinion counts. It's worthwhile to these young filmmakers. And there's all sorts of strange stuff. I was asked to preview a, a movie that, that seemed at first to have questionable artistic merit, and it's The Three Stooges Interpret Reefer Madness, the 1936 film, and I mean that's pretty twisted. Here you got like so. What they submitted was a 15-minute film done in a 1930s, 40s style, uh, featuring three people posing as the three students and doing a damn good job of it, if if that's a good thing, and uh, and doing Reefer Madness in in a very stylistic and and strange and disturbing way. And uh, so again, it sticks in my mind. That's the problem. You see that film and you go. Gee, that was disturbing, and I've remembered ever since. So anyway, you'll have to let me know. Today on this show, it's, this is just, just an introduction. It's like really a hi. This is Mark Emery of POT TV talking to our audience because we have a lot of exciting things on the go coming up, and they'll all be here. But in a few moments, I'll be with Brian McAllister, a lawyer from Windsor, Ontario, who basically uh, established what we were saying now is that pot is legal in Ontario. As you may have heard from previous POT TV shows, uh, marijuana possession cases are not being tried and forwarded where charges have been laid in three provinces now, in Prince Edward Island, uh, Nova Scotia, I believe, and Ontario. And that they're being suspended because one judge, followed by yet another judge confirming this, uh, has ruled that there is no pot law in Ontario or in Canada uh, because of the Terry Parker ruling in, in July of 2000. So we're going to talk to Brian McAllister, the lawyer who made that argument. He's going to tell us what's going on right now in the government's appeal of that uh, very momentous decision. Uh, the decision of the Supreme Court won't affect his one. We could have legal marijuana even much sooner than the Supreme Court. So it's a totally exciting environment right now in Canada. and. Uh, We'll hear what Brian McAllister has to say in just a moment. We have Brian McAllister on the phone with us. Brian McAllister is a lawyer from Windsor, Ontario, who on January 2nd of 2003, this year, came up 
uh, managed to convince, quite possibly, we're going to talk to him shortly, is pot legal? Pot is legal, he said in Ontario. Is that right, Brian? Is that am I am I correct in presuming that you went to the judge to tell him that pot is in fact legal? Uh, in the province of Ontario, at least, and uh, you know, I, I want to be as cautious as I can in terms of I don't want I don't want uh, anybody getting in any trouble on account of what I'm saying. But uh, at least in the province of Ontario, uh, what did you I, tell this judge, and uh, and how did he respond? Well, as your um, audience probably is familiar with uh, Terry Parker, and this is where the ball started uh, about uh, two and a half years ago, July two, uh, uh, of 2000, uh, the Ontario Court of Appeal struck down the uh, prohibition on possession of marijuana. Um, For medical reasons. That, that was the Parker decision? That's right. And yeah. they, because uh, Terry Parker uh, couldn't access marijuana for medical purposes. They said the law that prohibited the, the absolute bar on, on marijuana was unconstitutional. So they struck down the law. And that was in July 2000, I in remember. July 2000. But with, they also suspended that declaration for 12 months. Oh, that's right. And then they ordered the federal government to come up with, and you'll explain this part, and they failed to do so. Well, they, they didn't tell the government what to do, but they said uh, they, they put it, the ball in the government's hand, uh, court, basically, and said, you know, it, it, we're assuming that you want to address this in some fashion, and so we're giving you 12 months to do that. 12 months, the law disappears. The uh, you should stop right there and to repeat. They said if you don't have the law changed in 12 months, there is no marijuana possession law. Well, that not that what they said? They said... We were certainly under that impression for the year. ...conditional on anything, quite frankly. They, they didn't make it conditional on anything. They said in 12 months, this the prohibition is gone. So I think what they assumed is the government would enact some sort of uh, some sort of uh, prohibition that would include um, uh, an allowance for for medical users. The government didn't do that though. They simply brought in some rules that allowed people who uh, sought access to, to marijuana for medical reasons uh, to apply for it. But they didn't actually uh, come out and explicitly say, well, you know, by the way, you know, pot's still illegal. Uh, and, and my argument was, well, it was incumbent on the government to, to reenact that section that said pot's still illegal. Hmm. Okay, so now you're on January 2nd. Of, so a year goes by and they come up with new regulations and you show up in court in the year 2002, presumptively prob um, sometime in the latter part, because the verdict, your decision came back on January 2nd, didn't it? This was argued in, uh, in December and the judge ruled on January 2nd. And what did he say? Well, he said that, indeed, uh, if, if the government's response to my argument was that, well, the, the regulations were enacted before the year expired, and they saved the section before it became invalid. Um, that was their response, and, my, and my, my argument was simply that, well, that's not enough. It, it wasn't open to the government to save the section. It was going to disappear in a, in a year. The judge said that, the government was not allowed to save it by way of regulations, that they had to actually enact the new law that Parliament passed, you know, both Parliament, uh, mm -hmm. the Commons, and the Senate. And so, and the judge accepted your argument? He accepted that, and he says, so the effect of which is that there's, there's no law, at least in the province of Ontario, that effectively prohibits marijuana. There's a principle in law that says what is not prohibited is permitted. Now, a series of judicial rulings from other courts have followed since you're, you're, you're familiar with them? Yeah, and it's been, it, they've actually helped, you know, we've since, you know, the, the, the government immediately appealed my case uh, because it obviously creates quite, uh, created quite a stir. And the, uh, the uh, marijuana case in Ontario have been on hold, the prosecutions. And also in Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia now. Yeah, well, before that, though, uh, an interesting case that was,